Hi guys, let me know if you can see and hear me, okay? Um, I don't have the screen that you guys have up right now. I only have the broadcast screen, so I'm not sure if I'm appearing. Oh, Thanks, wait, Tina. let me turn off my hey, volume Richard. one second. Say that's Oopsies. Forgot about that. Can you guys see me? Or, or I, I guess a lot of you guys can see me. Can you hear me? Is the volume okay? It looks like it's working on my screen, at least. Ads are ratchet. I don't like ads. Hi, Deb. Sounds good. If you don't see Drew, refresh your browser. Yeah, you guys, refresh your browser. Well, I don't even know if you're the people who can't see me. I wouldn't even need to say that, so can't see me anyways. I'm just kidding. I know. Is It's so dark in here. Look at how dark it is. It um, This light up here actually broke, and so we had to get a new bulb for it, and I guess we didn't get enough wattage or something. I'm not sure, but it is like... It's not very bright, and I got an ot light, but it, sh my dog shattered it and broke it yesterday. It's my third one that's shattered. I swear those ot light thingies just, I don't know, I, do, I have really bad luck with them. But when I point the camera down, I think it will be better, because everything's on a black background, so it's going to be a lot brighter. So like my cubes. Cubes. So you guys, tonight we're making this journal. Oh my gosh, it's so dark. I'm so sorry. You can't even see it. What was that? Oh, it was a photo. If I could point the camera down, I think we're going to give it just a little bit more time. Just a couple minutes. I'll point the camera down and it'll be much better, you guys. You'll be able to see it so much better on this background. I swear. Aha! Uh -huh. Oh, happy Scrappy. That's kind of funny. I like that. I'm on your TV. I know, it's really dark right now, you guys. When I point the camera down, it'll be much better. I, I promise. I promise. I wonder if I could brighten it. Like, I wish there was some way I could do it through here, because I'd be able to brighten it up, but I'm not sure. Okay, you guys, so I'm going to point the camera down, and we're going to get started. I just want to make sure that the uh, that it's a little bit brighter down here, or that you can see it a little bit, a little bit better. Is that better? Can you guys... Uh, it's still dark. That is, like, literally so dark. Can you guys see this? Not really. Okay. I think I'm going to go see if I could grab a lamp. I didn't realize how dark it was. It's, like, it seriously appears much brighter than mine. And I don't think white will help. I think white will actually, like, distract. It's really dark. And I think I could adjust the settings, but I'm not sure. Okay, you guys, I'm, I'll be right back. Just stay, stay here. Okay, guys, I got a lamp. I'm going to see if this will do anything. Did that do anything? Is that better? Can you guys see a little bit better? 
I seriously feel like this is a ton better. Okay, cool, you guys. Awesome. Yeah, this is way, 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 way better. I can just tell myself. Yay! I'm so excited. Sorry about that. Sorry about that little detour for a second. I just... I. It looked much brighter on my screen, and then when I started recording, it sort of dulled it down a little bit. But this is the album we're making tonight. Isn't it really pretty? I actually love the way this turned out. Um, I really, really like this. We're going to be using one of the Prima journals. They came out with a new one, the CHA, but the one I'm using is the one from the previous CHA. They're sort of the same thing, so um, it is It's pretty cool. And we are also going... I'm going to show you guys the tools and supplies we're going to be using for this. Um, yeah, it's really dimensional, as you guys can see, and I, we're going to be making it tonight, so it's pretty, pretty cool. I love this. So I'm going to move that off to the side really quickly. I'm going to turn it so I can see it. And the tools and supplies we're going to be using are, of course, this Memories album from Prima here. It looks like this. It's the Memories, um... Let me give you guys the item numbers of these items. This is 560959, and it's a mixed media journal in memories. So, this is what it's called, or this is what it looks like. It's 8.7 by 5.7 inches, and the spine is like a sort of like a faux leather spine, and it's brown. But on my actual journal, I painted it black, and I'm not sure if I'll be able to get through that tonight, but I can give you just I can just show you how to do it really quickly. It's pretty simple. So we're gonna be using this journal on the class. It looks like this. It has all of these inside pages in it, which you could flip through and um, like create your very own art journal. And then it also has a couple of um, just binders or bindings through here, and then it closes up and the, it hinges on the outside. And that's pretty much the album. There's this little uh, already installed sort of mechanism here. Pretty cool. The spine is made out of like a faux leather material. It's a really durable, um, like pleather. Yeah, what Carrie said. But it really does actually look like leather. I'm not sure if you can see the texture on there, but it seriously looks like leather. So we're going to be using this journal. Um, as far as embellishments go, we are going to be using... Um, this pack of Prima flowers, these are the Bravo Flowers and Cream, and that's item number 561888, and it's just these really pretty flowers. We're only going to be using one of those. Love those, so we're going to be using a package of those. Um, we're also going to be using this package of flowers. These, these are the Fall colored sobre flowers in item number 561628, and it's sort of like a mix of flowers, if you can see all the different colors you get in here. Super gorge. I really love those. And we're also going to be using some of these Tea Time Butterflies. And these are item number 562557. And these are the Papillion Tea Time Butterflies. If you guys have any questions at all while I'm showing these or you want to see them up close or anything, just let me know. I could definitely um, show them to you guys. And we're also going to be using this package of flowers. There's a couple missing. I did use them on the other album. I'm just going to be using the rest of them on this album. These are the 561260 Puccini flowers. And these are the ones that sort of have the, um, the uh, what is it called, resist on it. So when you spray on top of it, it shows through white. So those are awesome. And as far as leaves go, on this leaf, on these ones, I actually use the Vermont leaves, which are the, or on, sorry, on my sample, I use the Vermont leaves, like right, right back in here, and they're the stitched ones, but I'm actually out of them, and I thought I had a, quite a few packages of them left, and I couldn't find them anywhere, so I grabbed a pretty similar style of leaf, these are the lovely fabric leaves, they're burlap, and it's item number 547523. And they're pretty similar. The other ones are definitely a lot nicer. I love those ones. Um, I just like that, that they're felt and they have beadwork on them. But these ones are pretty... I love these. These are some of my favorite ones as well. And these are burlappy. So that was like the one substitute for the products. I, we're also going to be using this package of Tea Time Teos. These are seriously some of my favorite 
Prima things that Prima's ever came out with. I think these are so pretty. They are, they're called Teos, and they have a couple different styles. I wish they did them for this collection, or this um, release, but they didn't. I just think they're so pretty, aren't these? They look super expensive. And these are the Tea Time Collection ones. We're also going to be using some of these Poppies and Peonies uh, Donna Downey Studio flowers. And they're the sort of like the resin flowers. They look like this. And that is item number 921743. They look like brooches, like literally vintage brooches. But they're not. They have a flat back on them, so you could adhere them. Um, and we're also going to be using a window. This is 890711. These are one of the Shabby Chic Treasures. I think I'm going to be using possibly this one or this one. Probably this one. It does look more like a window. On the other project, I used the one that was right here. And it was just like this one, but it has the crosses or the little cross hatch in it. So I think I'm going to use this one. And these are the Shabby Chic Treasures. Also going to be using a couple of crystals. Satan crystals. These are just a... Uh, a spare pack I had. It's 551391, and these are actually going to be covered up. It's going to be pretty cool, so I'll show you guys that in the process as well. Uh, we're going to be using this mask by Donna Downey. It is a polka dot mask. It's a 6x6 six six size. Love this mask. I hope you guys can see that. And just a scrap piece of paper. This is a craftsman sheet that I just had in my scrap paper stash. Um, you guys can use any paper you have scrap. It's going to be completely covered. We're just using it for texture, so it doesn't matter if it does not show up at all. We're just literally using it for some texture. So I just have this scrap piece. It's going to be covered. So whatever you guys would like to use um, paper-wise, you could do that. So those are all the tools and supplies we're going to be using for tonight's um, class. We're also going to be using a couple of extra supplies, which I'm going to show you guys. These are some trims that I just have, like they're literally like scrap laces that I have in my stash. So I have this green one here, and then I have this sort of, this one's a vintage one. These are just scrap laces, and they create texture. This one's a Prima one right here, and I have this sort of like meshy one, perfect for texture as well. And then I have this other one, which is an awesome one for texture, sort of meshy. And then I have this string, which is like literally incredible for texture. I don't know. Can you see this? I just love the way the string looks in there. It's so pretty. And so we're going to be using some of the string as well. This is just like a cotton cording. And I also have a little bit of the Tim Holtz tinsel twine, which you're going to be using. I really like the way that this uh, looks. Did the screen go black? I hope it didn't. It did. No. Okay, a lot of people are saying no. Uh, these, this is the tinsel twine. Um, it comes in black, which I also have, but I want to use silver because I just sort of want the pops of shimmer in the background. But we're going to be also painting over the top of this. And lastly, for the tools, we're going to be using some Claudine Helmus Studio Matte Medium and also some Claudine Helmus Studio Gesso. So we're going to be using both of those and also some Claudine Helmus Studio black gesso. And actually this is just the semi-gloss acrylic paint in charcoal black. So it's not black gesso. It's just acrylic paint in charcoal black. So I have those. And then a couple color washes from Tim Holtz. I'm going to be using the stream color, which is a super pretty teal. And espresso, which is a, like a really, really rich, I love this color. It's like a dark brown. And then this color butterscotch, which is sort of like an orangey, you guys can see that. It's like an orangey yellow. So those are the tools that we're going to be using, and I think we can actually go ahead and get started, you guys. And to start, I'm going to take my journal here. I'm going to flip it towards me, so it's going to be backwards, but you guys are probably going to easily be able to get the idea of this. I'm going to grab the multimedia mat and open up the can. Hopefully it's still good. Sometimes I don't screw my lids on good enough, which just bugs me. And I have a paintbrush here. This is just like a regular paintbrush. It's actually one of the Claudin Helmuth paintbrushes. I don't know if you could tell the size of this. It's sort of like a fluffy one. And I'm going to start off by just painting a thin layer all along this left side of this matte gesso, or this matte medium. So I'm going to go ahead and paint a layer. And you can see how it's sort of like glossy. That's sort of the thickness you want. You, you're going to want enough to where if you put some thin lace in it, it will be able to sort of like bubble out of the lace holes, if that makes sense. Does that make sense? Am I even making sense? Probably not. But I just want 
it in this general area because this is sort of the area that the embellishment cluster is going to be going and so we're going to add some base for our embellishment cluster and you're going to sort of want to work quickly because this stuff does start to get like sort of tacky and dry so just start in and add it I'm going to lift my little piece up there and go over here Yes, and Carrie, also, you're mentioning the Adobe Flash Player. I actually had to um, update my Adobe Flash Player at um, this today. I had to update it before I was able to even start the class. So I don't know if maybe that, if you guys need to update your Adobe Flash Player, but that may be an idea. So then I'm going to grab my little texture elements, which are these laces, and I'm going to start laying them in here. I don't have a larger brush, Carrie. I'm so bad at maintaining brushes, like they literally are all dry. Trim it, and you're just going to just pat it in there. Your fingers are going to get so messy, like literally awfully messy. So suggest if you do not like that, um, wear some gloves. And I'm just going to take some more medium and just coat over the top of it in a pretty nice layer, just so I make sure that it sticks, and make sure to get it right on the ends as well. You could just sort of go over it. And I'm going to grab another piece of trim, just this one here, and cut it into a smaller strip. This is just going to give us the texture element that we want. Lay it in your matte medium, and then I'm going to grab a nice layer of it and sort of put it in here. This one's sort of an odd one to set. But you just sort of tap it on top and just get it all in there, get it all in. There we go. So, can you see how this just just going to start adding texture to your piece? And then I'm going to grab a little bit more and I'm going to go up and down. So I'm going to take this one, just go all the way up and down and just sort of press it in there. I actually really like the way this one sticks to the piece and it sort of has a little bit of like a silver flex in it, so it's really pretty and you're just gonna, in it like some spots, you don't have to do it the whole piece, just in some spots add a little bit more so it sort of encases the whole piece. How has you guys' weeks been? How have y'all been doing? I haven't seen you guys in so long, it seems so awkward. I don't know why. You guys good? It does look like a dryer sheet. I know, you guys, I've been so busy as well. Super busy, and I was, like, literally deathly ill. I don't know if you guys heard about that. I posted it on my Facebook. But I was so sick. Oh, it was gross. I had, like, 105 fever, and I had um, strep throat, and I think I had bronchitis, which ain't nobody got time for that. So it was... really wasn't the best over the weekend, but I'm so much better now. I still have like a runny nose and that's been like lasting forever, so probably won't go away for like another year. Okay, there we go. Our lace is on. That's, a, that's literally all the lace that we, um, that I'm going to put on there. And then I'm going to do paper. So as you guys know, I grabbed this piece of paper, which is that craftsman sheet. But you can use whatever paper you'd like. It's just for texture. So I'm going to cut it in some strips, some sort of thin strips. And then, and then possibly even some longer ones. Yeah. This is a multimedia. I'm not sure if you're going to be able to see it. It's the Studio... Studio Multimedium in Matte by Claudine Helmuth. That's the medium I'm using. It's my it's my all-time favorite one. I used to like Mod Podge. Oh my gosh, you guys. Have you ever gotten a headache from just using Mod Podge? I swear that stuff makes my head hurt so bad. It just, like, annoys my head. And I'm going to take a little bit of this, and I'm just going to put a paper strip down. This is going to give you a texture. Texture! I feel like I've said that word like 150,000 times. 
disregard my repetition. Learn that in digital photo. Repetition. And I'm going to take a little bit more. You could just go crazy with this however you really want to do it. Sort of lift up this back spine piece as well, and you could slip things underneath it. But I like to just go ahead and add the medium on this strip. And then I'm going to place it on top wherever I want it to go. And I this one's a little bit too long, so I'm going to cut it. And I'm going to take this little scrap, stick it right here. I don't know why, I just want to. And maybe I'll take a little bit of a longer strip and apply it to the top. To the top. Mm. Maybe I'll do it over here, just for fun. So I'm going to put it over here, and then I'll apply a nice layer on top. There we go. Mm. And I need a little bit more here. And you guys can definitely not adhere the whole thing down. If you want some pieces sort of sticking up or out or something like that, you could definitely do that as well. And I'm also going to go in now and add my string. And the way I do this is I sort of start clumping it like this. And I just set it, like, did you see how I just set that down? I just literally set it down, and I just take globs of this stuff, and I just stick it under, and just put it in, the like, some of the general areas. So you may think this is going to take a while to dry, but it's really not. And I add it a little bit on top, too, because I sort of want it to look like it's cemented in, in a way. I really like that look, so I'm just going to apply some over here, and then... After you have the, some of the general areas and probably some of the ends as well just stuck down, that's really all you need. Like the, All the other pieces can just sort of flow by themselves, but you're going to need some of it stuck down. So I'm going to do that. Can you see this dimension? Look at it. Isn't it pretty? Makes you feel better. Makes you feel better. And then I'm going to grab a little bit of this tinsel twine which I totally love, and I'm just going to cut off a small piece of it. And I think I just want like a little, little sprig of it right here. I'm just going to set it down in there, and you're just going to want to add, a, like, really, like, just generously add this. You're going to want it to, like, be cemented to your project. So I just add nice clumpiness of it. Okay, and I think that is almost all for texture. Actually, it's not. We're really not done. We're going to take some of, now we're going to start adding some more dimensional sort of embellishment type pieces. So I have these poppies and peonies, and I'm going to start by just pulling off some of them. Here's a purple one, and I'm going to apply my matte medium and stick it in there. And you're just going to like press it down and let the matte medium ooze out the sides. You're really going to want your pieces to stick on your project. So I'm gonna put that down. Oh, I also forgot to show you guys where you guys. I forgot to share this at the beginning. The products. I'm also gonna be using some of these vintage gears. These are these are not vintage. They're actually from Prima. They're the vintage trinkets gears, and I have um, also a typo zipper. These were I just stuck them on my uh, Prima wall like this because they were the last ones in the packages. So I have this little uh, typo zipper in white, which is what we're gonna be using and a couple of these gears. So I'm going to be using the gear and just applying a nice amount of matte medium on the back. And this will definitely hold. Like It seems like it won't hold this like sort of heavy gear, but it, it will. And you're just going to press it down, and then I'm going to layer on top of it a purple flower. And then I suggest going in and adding more medium on top of your gear, like in the cracks and sort of the edges. And I, this looks like a crazy mess right now, but trust me, it'll look gorge. Just add them all in there, and I'm going to add another gear, like, right about here. So I'm going to push that up, and go along the edges and add it, and just sort of take off the top and scoop some out of the center, because I don't want it all clustered in there. 
And I want another one probably like, where else do I want one? Uh, I want one like here, I think. Uh, no, I'm going to put one up in the corner, right up here. So scooping some medium out, and I'm going to stick this in there and sort of seal it. This. There we go. And now we're going to do a little bit with the mask. So I have the dot mask from Donna Downey, and I'm going to just place it up here in this general vicinity. And I like to use my bone folder for this. I take like a nice scoop of the matte medium out and I just take it and I just rub my bone folder across and it just fills in the cracks and it gives gets all your dots filled in. And I don't like I don't like going all the way to the edges because I like that sort of random placement of the dots. So I'm going to pull up and you're going to have some dots on there. And you can even do it in other areas. So I'm going to go ahead and just add a couple of dots right over here just by sort of adding some on there. And then do I want any more? Maybe I'll add just like a, a few of them like right there. And then you can uh, go ahead and clean your mask. But for time's sake, I'm just going to set it off to the side. And then just to clean off your bone folder, you can scrape it on the edge a couple times. And then just grab a paper towel and just wipe it off. It comes off super easy. So it's not going to mess your bone folder. If it dries on there, you could easily peel it off as well. So there's our texture elements in the whole project. I do have a couple more texture I'm going to add with the Puccini flowers. These are the uh, flowers that... Or have the resist on them. I'm actually going to take them, take some of them, and just apply a generous layer of medium and just stick them down to the page because I want this to act as an actual layer of sort of like as our base layer still, not an embellishment layer. So that's why I'm going ahead and sticking it down. So I'm going to apply this one here. And you sort of just have to envision where your embellishment's going to be. So, I'm applying it on. So, can you see this? Is this making a little bit of sense here? Well, it's really not. It looks sort of crazy. I'm going to do it towards you guys so you guys can see it a little bit better. And I'm going to pull off a couple of these little gem or these little flowers and apply them on. And I'm just going to add some on top of it as well. Never hurts to add a little bit on top just even if it's going to cover the texture, it's just good. I just like the way it looks. It's good for you. I'm going to add one here as well. Some of the stuff may be covered up at the end, but it's okay because some of the other stuff that you may not have added is going to show up and just add just that little extra detail that just looks really cool. And anything else? Yeah, there's a couple more things for detail. There are some of the gems, the little Prima crystals, like this. I'm just going to take a couple of them off and just apply them really just randomly on here. So I'm sort of going to have some sense as to where I put them. I don't want to just scatter them all over the place. But I do want to just apply quite a few of them because they're just going to add sort of little disco ball textures to the pieces. And you could sort of hide them in your laces and in your gems and in your clusters and here and there, just sort of put them all over the place. It's going to look great. Doesn't this look like a hot mess right now? It looks really ratchet. Drop, drop that on the... F oh, I should not be singing that song. Just pretend I did not do such a thing. Yeah, I'm using matte medium. It's a Studio Matte Medium by Claudine Helmuth. And I'm going to grab my heat tool, and we're going to start heating. This may take a while, so what do you guys want to chat about? Because this is pretty quiet. What would you like to chat about? Thank you. It's a double ring. No one knows how I wear these. Like, I wear them to school a lot, and no one knows how I, like, do work in these. And the matte medium really does dry pretty quick. It's sort of white at first. As you can see, it's a white consistency. But as it dries, it turns transparent. So as you can see, these dots are more transparent than these ones over here. That's because it's dried a little bit. So 
as it starts to turn transparent, you know it's dry. It's going to do such. We have quite a few members on tonight. 127. Um, I added medium to the top of the flowers, Lorena, because I want them... I don't want them to pop off, so it's more of like I'm adding it to the sides and around it, if that makes sense, because it's going to sort of encase it and cement it to the page. Yeah, these white flowers are called Puccini. I'm not... You probably cannot see because it's really, like, invisible. But the blue... There's a little bit of, like, a sort of a, a tint of blue in there, and it's actually like a flourish pattern. They have a resist on them. But I'm just going to heat it all up, attempt to dry it. Sort of check on it. Still a little bit gooey, but it's, it's really close. And it's really, the these little um, gears, like, they, they're really quick because you heat the metal and the metal gets so burning hot, it literally, like, boils the underside. So I'm going to heat up the dots over here. Yes, that's a perfect idea. If you guys have, just keep your left, keep your leftover like scraps. Keep your leftover scrap papers, your little leftover pieces of twine. Like I just have this little piece of twine sitting on my desk. Keep your little pieces of twine. Keep your tiny pieces of lace because you can create so much texture in your projects like this. Yeah, sequins, you guys. You could totally take your sequins and add it as well. So I think I'm almost done. This is really the longest part of the whole class, I swear. This takes a while. Not a while, but it just takes a little bit of time. And the reason I'm not adding texture here is because I know I'm going to be embellishing in this area. So I don't need much texture. It's just sort of like the outer areas need some texture in them. Just a tablespoon of texture. These are all pretty much dry. Probably this area right here needs a little bit more. Okay, I think that's good enough. Alrighty, so now I'm going to take my paintbrush that has the white on it, and I just have this water bottle, and I'm going to dip it in there. I sort of like it because I can sort of go like this with it, and it cleans it, like, really cool. I don't know. I just do that all the time. Because this is the brush that I've had for, like, quite a while, because Carrie sent it to me. Thank you, Carrie! Or, Prima sent it to me. I don't remember, but... Since they sent it to me, I'm going to keep it greatly, lovelyly nice. So then I'm going to just wipe it off. There might be some on there, but that's okay. That's okay. And I'm taking this white gesso. This is a Studio Claudine Helmuth white gesso now. I'm not going to be using the matte medium. I'm going to put the lid on that. Make sure to always put your lids on your mediums because they can easily start to... Um, Harden. And I'm hoping that this one is not hard because, okay, it's not good. Now you're going to take your white, and this is going to seem weird, you guys. It's, it's literally going to seem really odd. You're going to paint the whole thing white. So start over here and start painting. Start painting your whole project white. And you're going to want to do sort of like a thin layer of white. You don't want it 
like super thick because you're going to want your texture to show through. So I like to just sort of go like this and sort of blot it on. Doesn't this seem odd? I always feel like this is such a weird step. Like, why would you paint what you just did white? But you're going to need to. It's just a little technique for you. I'm going to paint it. Paint, paint, paint. You'll see why. And you're going to paint over, like, all of these bumps up here and all the paper. And as you see, the paper just adds, like, a, a really cool piece of texture there. That's why you need just any scrap piece of paper. And I'm almost done. I don't think I'm going to paint it all white just because it may take a little bit too long. But you're just going to want to get, like, a majority of it white. And I, I also get the white, like, on top of this buckle. I like the way it looks. If you want to, like, mask that off or tape it off or something, you could totally do that. It's up to you, whatever you want to do. But I like to just go ahead and add white to the whole thing. And then after you have pretty much white, and I really want to get this area whited because I know I'm going to be doing some pretty cool techniques over there. And the edges, get all those white. There we go. Maybe I'll add a little bit of white under here. I'm not sure how much this is going to show. And add a little bit more in here in these clusters. Or this cluster of texture. Texture! There we go. Does this make sense? Yes, I'm using gesso. Gesso! I'm literally acting so weird tonight. And you're just going to heat this up. This will heat up quickly, though. Did you guys have any questions? Oh, I'm going to add a little bit more here. Yeah, I do have a cold. It's annoying. Sorry. Uh, yeah, it's not going to bling anymore, but it's going to look gorge. And gesso dries really, really quick, you guys. Like, I think this is pretty much almost dry. There's some thicker areas. See, the blings just add the faceted, like, ball thingies. That's what I use them for. Okay, you guys, I will give you a close-up. This is what it looks like, close-up. Can you see the texture in there? See, there's just little bits of, like, lace in the background and just, like, other pieces of lace and the string that really adds a neat texture and the, the tinsel, twin, twi tinsel trim, which I really love the way that looks. And then these look all cemented down, and it's just really cool. So I'm going to take this little baggie here. We're going to be doing something really cool now, and I'm going to set this on top. And grabbing paper towels, I'm going to double them up and stick them inside the book just because I don't want the spray going everywhere. And I'm also going to grab another paper towel and double it up, or just fold it in half. And I'm going to lay it along this edge, but I'm going to add a little bit of washi tape just because, well, it almost fell. I just almost died, you guys. I swear I did. Just knocked the lamp over. Okay, so here's this piece of washi tape. I like using washi tape to adhere things now because it's not very sticky, so it's easy to do. And I'm just going to take this paper towel and stick it half on half, and just really align it all the way up with that edge. And there you go. So you're going to have your edge masked off now. 
and we're going to start spraying. This is the fun part. So I'm going to be using the butterscotch one first, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. And I'm going to just start spraying this project. So I'm going to start down there, and I'm just going to start spraying it with the butterscotch. Maybe I want a little bit of butterscotch up here as well. So I'm going to add a little bit of there, up there. And I'm going to add some stream, which is like a really pretty blue. So I'm going to go ahead and add like this stream color right over there and a little bit down here. And then I'm going to go in with my brown color. Oopsies, I'm spraying it on my computer. I don't really want this on my computer. Okay. Didn't realize that. And now I'm going to take this one, which is called Espresso, and just, like, literally fill in the areas that we didn't get. So a little bit here, a little bit there, a little bit everywhere. There we go. Doesn't that look crazy? And you're just going to start heat setting it. So start heat setting it right away. We are going to be taking away some of the color, but you're going to want to start heat setting it so uh, quite a bit of it stays. And the colors will pool together. I'm not sure if you can see, but they're actually sort of blending. And once I get it off this white background, you'll see how cool it looks. It looks much cooler from where I am. These mists dry really, really quickly. So after I've dried it a pretty good amount, I'm going to take another paper towel and just sort of blot it, and I'm going to start taking away some of the mist as well, because I sort of want the white to still show through a little bit. So I'm going to take away some of the mist sort of in this general vicinity. I really want this to be a little bit less colored. It sort of makes the colors. So there's a little bit of a green up there now, which is perfectly fine. And I'm just going to go ahead and blot it. sort of get it all over there and I think that that's really like a lot so now I'm gonna start pulling the strip off and as you can see you kept your spine nice looking you can pull the papers out from the inside and I can bring it back to the black background look it doesn't it look really awesome so as you can see it looks so much better on a black background Looks kind of Halloweeny. Weeny. It's a funny word. Okay, so I'm gonna take my paintbrush again. I just set it in water while I was working, and I'm going to again go into the gesso. And this seems a little odd, but I'm gonna go ahead and just dry brush it on. So I have like a Prima piece of Prima packaging here, and I'm just gonna literally add like a little bit of. Oh, it's not dry yet. I need to make sure it's dry. I'm gonna heat it up and completely dry it. You're going to want it completely, completely dry for like this next section. This is like sort of where the detailing comes in, the fun pots. Oh my gosh, you mentioned drying time, hold music. Have you guys heard the song Sweater Weather by The Neighborhood? The song is called Sweater Weather. It is so good. You guys should definitely look it up if you haven't. No, it's Stream Butterscotch and uh, Espresso.
No, these are not shimmery. These are solid, which is what I really like about them. They are, and they're super opaque and really vivid. They're sort of like the Delusions ones, the Delusions mist that Ranger also does. But um, I really, really like these. So I'm going to take my paintbrush now and just blot it on a paper, paper towel. And now you can go ahead and take your gesso. And we're going to sort of do that dry brushing again. I'm just going to add like a little bit of gesso over the top of the texture because it's going to really make the texture pop. This is sort of how your whole project is going to come together. You really need to highlight the details, so you're going to need to go over the top of some of these like these areas. Can you see how the details are just sort of popping out? This is what I learned when doing this. Like You need to go in and literally hand do each detail, which is a fun thing. I really like it, but it is time consuming, so as you do it, like, your details are just going to pop and just really pop out. Can you guys see this? I'm going to show you guys again. So I'm going to put off my brush a little bit, and I'm going to grab a little bit of white paint, stick it on my packaging, and just, like, sort of take a little bit of it. And I am just going to go in right here and just go over the top of, like, some of these areas with this white gesso. Can you see how this, like, dimension is literally just, like, popping out? It's really, really cool. I love the way that, that it just does that. And I'm just going to take a little bit more and just go over the top of the dimension. Because it's sort of solid right now. The color is solid. So as you add, as you're adding this white sort of layer of really cool texture, it's going to make the under layer pop out because now you're on top of a solid color. I don't know if I even made sense saying that, but just pretend I did. Okay. I'm going to go around the edges of these things and just over the top of this net because the net really needs to be defined and then over the top, over the edges of like the paper that we added, you can just add a little bit of paint to the edges, make that pop a little bit, add a little bit more white paint over here. This area up here is really sort of needed a white paint area because we're going to be doing black on it as, top, as well, but you're going to want a little bit of a base color. So I just sprayed the whole thing. So I'm going to go ahead and add just a little bit more white paint. You can even add it pretty heavy in some areas, like I just did. Sort of blend it up to the top. There we go. Does this look gorgeous? Looks gorge. Okay. Now, we're going to start embellishing even more. So, now that we have it looking like this, See how the details just pop? Do you Can you see the details much more now? I, I know I can. Like, I think they look much better. We're going to start embellishing much more. So, we're going to go in with some of our flowers. These are the Prima Flowers uh, Bravo. And there's this little really pretty rhinestone in the center, but I'm sorry, I'm going to be pulling it out. So, I'm going to pull it off. It's a vintage lead button. So, I'm going to keep this because it's gorgeous. So, I'm going to pull it off. I always do this with my flowers. Sometimes people go crazy when I do that. I'm like, I'm sorry. Uh, but I'm also going to take... The reason I did such a thing was because I'm going to be taking these gorgeous brooches. Or, like, they look like brooches. Look at it. And I'm going to be using this one right here. And it's going to be going in the center. See that gorge? And I'm going to be using some, instead of the, my medium, I'm going to actually go ahead and use some liquid glue now. This is my 3-in-1 Beacons Adhesive. I wish I had my Fabri-Tac, but I, I'm all out of it, and I just haven't taken the time to order it. I need to cut a bigger hole in this, like, really, really bad. But I'm going to add that to the center of the flower. And I'm going to cut a little bit of a larger hole. There we go. And then I'm going to start placing. So I, I know I want this here, and then I want my little resin window as well, so I'm going to grab the resin window. There might be a little bit of paper debris that's on there, but I'm going to take my resin window, and I want that to be sort of here-ish. So you can sort of just mess around with placement. So I want that to be there. I want that to be like there. See how it's sort of flowing? It's going from corner over, and this one's a little bit bare, but that it's just going to be texture. So it's going to be pulling over. You're also going to want to grab your Prima Flowers, the Fall Sobre Flowers. And you're just going to want to start placing those as well. And you're just going to lift up your flowers, 
play some wherever you'd like, you guys. Just go crazy with it, and it might look like you're adding too much, but really it's not once you start um, embellish or not embellishing, but once you start uh, painting these ones as well, you're really not going to notice how many flowers you have on there. They're just going to blend together. This one's sort of poinsettia style. And I also want to add like another one over here, maybe here. Just, uh, no, I don't want that one there. I want another one though. Maybe I don't. Maybe I'll add it there. Okay, so those are the flowers. Thank you, Carrie. Carrie actually did see this in person at CHA. So I'm just going to start adhering these embellishments down. So I'm going to pull them away, and I'm going to start adding glue. And I had a lot of glue. Glue! I think glue is a fun word to say. Just stick it down in your project. I'm going to add my large flower now, like my focal or focal flower. Lay it here. Push it over a little bit, and I'm going to go ahead and add my other little flowers. And you're just going to layer them underneath. Like this. Like so. And I'm going to go ahead put this little daisy down here, the other side, and I'm going to add this one. I think I wanted it like, I don't know, where did I want to put this? Here? Yeah, let's just stick it there. Why not? Why not? YOLO! I I've always wanted to say that on a video, I swear. YOLO means only live, you, or YOLO is you only live once, and I swear all these kids are saying it now, and it's so annoying, I just want to punch them in their eyebrow. But I can't, because I'm not allowed. And I'm going to grab a couple of the leaves. These are those burlap leaves, and I'm going to start adding leaves. You always need leaves if you have flowers. So I'm going to grab a little bit, just pull up the flowers, stick them under there, add a leaf, a left. Oh, trust me, I would never punch someone. I'd be too scared they would, like, kill me. And I know this still looks like a crazy mess, but trust me, you will love the outcome once we're all done. And I'm going to add, pull this flower up, pull this flower up, just add that leaf under there. Whatever little bits of texture you can add. It's really what you want. And I actually have this other resin window, which may be cool to add. I don't think I'm going to, though. But I kind of want a little bit more over here. What else can I add? Let's see. I can add this other embellishment, but I don't know where. Guess it's going there. You can see it peeking through the window. That's what it looks like. So I'm going to go ahead and just press it. I just want it to really stay firm. And now we're going to go back and color it with gesso again. Color all our work. I know. It's crazy, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So I'm gonna take my white gesso, and I'm simply gonna go in and color all these flowers white. Or attempt to color them all white. Or majority white. You don't have to color the whole thing white. Just, like, get a majority of it colored. Including the leaves. Don't forget those. And I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but you're going to want to paint over your embellishment as well. Look. Paint on some of your leaves. Ooh. 
what else do I want to paint on? Add a little bit more paint to this center. And those, and a little bit on top of there. Oh, and some on top of, definitely on top of this resin. There we go. And I'm going to go ahead and heat it. I hope you guys don't mind. We're going to be going a little bit over an hour today, you guys. Just a little. Probably like an hour 20 minutes, an hour 15. We're already at 50, 55 minutes. Yeah, it, yeah, that's the that's the thing, you guys. You could use whatever color. It doesn't matter the color. You don't have to coordinate colors because you're gonna gesso over it and spray it anyway. So it doesn't matter what color your items are that you're using. It just matters if they have texture. If you want to put them there, they look good. So pretty much done. And I. I'm going to go ahead and replace my little spray catch thing. I don't know what to call this. And I'm also going to go ahead and replace my washi tape edge thing. And I'm going to lift the petals up that are sort of peeking over. Oh my gosh, you guys, I just realized something. I haven't even had Starbucks in like a week. What the? I normally get them every single day. I'm kind of crazy. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. And let's go ahead and start misting. So, in this brown area, I want to respray this stuff brown. Like, like that. Just get it in there. There you go. You can add. Don't even hesitate on how much you add. It doesn't matter. Add as however much you want. And I'm going to spray that. And I'm going to go ahead and spray this with some blue. Blue. And it may look a little crazy right now, but trust me, once we add the detail work, you are going to think it's pretty cool. And I want a little bit of yellow. And I'm going to finish this off with brown right throughout there. Sort of spritz it in inside the little cracks and getting some of the flowers and other pieces. And you're going to start, I just start heating it right away. Do you guys want to see the hole in my moccasin? I got it because I burnt a hole in it. <laughs> At a campfire. I didn't realize campfires were hot and I stuck my foot in it. And the window takes the color even more because I, I gessoed it first. I am using the uh, Tim Holtz Adirondack Color Wash in the color Espresso, Stream, and Butterscotch. It looks a little plain right now, I know, but you guys, trust me, you will see what we're going to do. It's it's really going to jazz it up a little, a little tidbit, and I'm going to push this down. down. Yeah, you could definitely use whatever mist you want. You could use your Glimmer Mist, Tim Holtz Mists, Heidi Swap, Color Shines, Glimmer Mist, uh, October Afternoon Mists. I don't know. Whatever you want to use. I don't care. I just like the color wash because it's super opaque and gorge. You could also use the Delusions, which would be awesome. Okay, so that's enough for now. And I'm going to peel these off again.
that's what you get. That's what you get when you let your heart win. Ooh. That was good singing, right? Okay, you guys, we're not even done. Well, we're all we're actually almost done, but we're not completely done. You're going to see what we're going to do. We're going to go in with a little bit more white paint, and I got even more mist in there, and put it on your palette again. I'm going to use this one this time. And we are going to, again, dry brush, but you're going to see the detail that's going to just, like, literally pop out of these pieces. So go ahead and dry brush this white paint. I might be able to not get it, like, white everywhere, because there are still some pretty... wet areas, but I'm going to go over the top of them anyways. Add a little bit of white there. Go ahead and... This one, this is like sort of like a highlighter. That's what I like to think of it as. It just adds your highlights to your project. Go over all this. I think like the first time I did this project, I probably painted white and black a, like a numerous times. It was really fun. I don't know why. I just felt like adding like the, the small little details that I did with the paint just created such a really pretty look. And I'm going to also go, since this is a little bit drier, I'm going to go back and add a little bit more white paint here and you guys we're seriously not to the cool part the cool parts when we add the black you don't it doesn't feel like adding black is gonna do much but you guys are gonna be amazed by what the black does like it really it adds such a depth to the project it looks so cool so I'm gonna go ahead and just paint the edges look at how pretty it looks isn't that cool? Really awesome. And I'm going to go ahead, and now we're going to do the black, but I'm going to dry it a little bit first. I know, Kimberly, I seriously work so fast, it's crazy. Okay, this is the fun part, you guys. Check out what this black is going to do. So, again, I'm using the black, the Charcoal Black Studio Semi-Gloss Acrylic Paint. And it's like a really dark, dark black acrylic paint. And I'm going to, again, take another piece of packaging. Grab this piece here. I want you guys to just be able to see this. So, I'm going to grab a little bit of the black paint and just put it on my packaging and sort of swirl it on. And just sort of get your brush sort of like a dry coating of it, but watch. Can you guys see the, like the texture that's starting to pop out of this piece? Like it it's so cool and I need more paint. You just get so many neat textures that just start to pop out with black. And I never expected that. I always thought like a white paint would do something like this. But the black is really, really a cool paint. And you could add thick layer of black if you like in some areas. Like in the corner here, I want it to be a little bit darker. So I'm going to add a little bit of a darker black area or black coating. So I'm going to add a little bit over here. And if you get a little bit too much, you could use your fingers to just sort of smear it. And I'm going to add a little bit here and just sort of highlight those textures. And I add a little bit too much, so it doesn't take a little bit off. And just a little bit on the window. 
a little bit on these pieces, on these flowers, definitely, I want some. And then I'm going to add a little bit to the gear over here. But my main focus is probably these dots. I really want to just emphasize the dots. So I just want to sort of go over the top of the dots with the... With the and I'm also going to just outline that paper that we added here, just because I really want that like to look dimensional, if that makes sense. No, this isn't black gesso, this is uh, black paint, but black gesso would probably do the same thing, I'm pretty sure. And I want to go in and add another, I don't know, I need something. Oh, I never use my butterflies. Forgot about them. Take a butterfly. I think I want to add it here because I need something here. Yeah, it looks good. So I'm going to take my butterfly and I'm going to add a glob of glue and stick it in here. And I'm just going to like paint it black. I'm not even going to start going off white since it is a pretty dark color already. I'm going to paint it black, take a little bit of spray and like this charcoal brown color, spray it and heat it and we're actually going to go back one last time at the very end and give the whole thing like another white coating so I'm going to go ahead and take my black again and I'm just going to continue highlighting areas, like key areas or areas I really want sort of the definition to come out on. And I'm going to add a little bit to this little piece here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and do like a really thick sort of edging on this, just so you could sort of tell that it's there. So I'm going to go ahead and give it an edging around it. It's sort of like you're literally like an artist, like you're going to paint details on your project. So you're just going to go ahead and paint. Paint away. And I also forgot about my little uh, price or my little memories zipper tag thingy. So these are, this is one of those little memo zippers, the uh, Prima ones from the Vintage Trinket Collection, the little zipper. And I'm going to add that in here. I want to put it like probably right here on top of this flower even though like I just randomly put it on top of a flower it's fine so I'm gonna stick it on top of a flower and just start to adhere it down and I'm gonna grab a little bit of black paint and I'm gonna go over the top of this and even though it is black and black you can go ahead and like wipe some of it away and you'll still be able to see it but it will give it a little bit of a vintage look but that's not all we're gonna do we're also going to take our brush and I think that's all the black I want to add so I'm gonna go ahead and clean my brush so I clean it I just go like this anyone have any questions and you're really gonna to want to make sure your brush is clean after going from a black acrylic paint to like a white gesso so make sure you have a pretty clean brush Okay, and then I'm going to take a little bit of white gesso, or I'm actually going to take a pretty good scoop of it, and we're going to do a little bit more dry brushing, just literally over some of these areas, not all of them. I just want to go back and just add, give like it the highlights. So just the tips and the edges mm -hmm. of your pieces to let the let it sort of pop out, and I'm going to be using this journal for. You guys like the last one? I'm a I'm actually gonna start doing like some art journal pages in it. I think this is a perfect size journal mm -hmm. for art, like a perfect size art journal page, or perfect size for an art journal page. If that makes sense to make an art journal out of. So, I think that's what I'm going to be doing with it. I'm gonna just scrape some of that off so you can still read the word. Go out of details.
I'm going to add a nice amount to the butterfly's wings just because there's a lot of like crease indentations in the wings and such. So make sure to get those and sort of go down in your flowers and even on the inside of the on the inside of your window just to add a little bit of like a nice color in there. Add that mm -hmm. and scrape off some of the excess. Go ahead and a little bit on there, sort of wash it off a little bit. I think that that is almost ready to be finished. I want a little bit more color, so I'm going to go ahead and take like this Delusions Mist, the butterscotch, and just add a couple splatters of the butterscotch just in here, just to give it a little bit of a darkened look. Just taking it and letting the ink mist just sort of splatter down on my project. Here we go. And what else? Can you see my hair? Isn't it pretty? Just kidding. I do want a little bit more color. Like, I feel like I want a little bit more yellow in this, which is not a problem. I could totally add a little bit more yellow just simply by spraying a little bit more yellow. So, that's, I wanted to add a little bit more yellow. I think that looks a little bit better. I'm going to put that in. Yeah, I like that much more. I'll hold it up in just a second, you guys. Do you like it? And then I would paint this black, which I did on my first one, which I'll show you. This is the first one. I spent much more time on this one. As you can see, I did a lot more like of a white highlighting on this one, which I, I definitely did do. I spent a little bit more time white highlighting on this one, which I'm probably going to go back and add a little bit more white on this one, because I just feel like it makes like the little pieces just pop. So... See, just like, like that, I just added a little bit, it makes them pop. So, I really like the way the white looks on there. If you don't like the way the white looks, you don't have to do it. But I just do. I think it has a nice gorge touch, don't you? So, just gonna, I'm going to add a little bit more white while I'm here. A little, a little bit goes like a long way, you guys. You could really dry brush quite a bit with this. So they're a little bit different. They're both a little bit different. This one that uses a little bit more products, like this uh, vintage roll and a couple of wood pieces that I didn't want to include, just because um, I didn't want you guys to have to spend so much money if you were wanting to recreate this. Because like this little wood branch, it, it doesn't really do much, but like it does. But it does. It's not needed. As you can see, we created a really cool scenery just with this, and I really love the shape of this window quite a bit, uh, quite a bit more than this shape here. Yeah, the window is really cool. You can add like a sentiment, but this one does say journal on it, so it's a pretty good sentiment since this is sort of an art journal. You can go ahead and scrape some of it off if you want to. But I think that's all, you guys. That was the class tonight. I hope you enjoyed this little art journal book. I'm going to put my paintbrush in the water. I'm going to point thy camera up. It's a lot brighter in here, as you guys can see.
much better. Here's a book. I know, it's much brighter in here now. So much better. Can you guys tell I dyed my hair? Well, I mean, I didn't. I, I've had it dyed this color for like a couple classes, but it's da darker. When I started Prima, my hair was red because I'm, li I'm literally like a super orange ginger. Maybe I'll show you guys a picture. I feel like I should because it will be fun. Let's go on an adventure. I want to show you guys my natural hair color. Okay, almost there. Okay. Here it is. Can you see that orange? Do you see this orange hair? That's orange! I don't know if you can see that. I like my brown hair more. Makes me feel better. Just kidding. That's the class tonight, you guys. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope I taught you a thing or two. I felt like this class had quite a few techniques in it, which is pretty cool. And I have a couple things to tell you guys. Don't forget to tune in next week, which is March 7th class, I believe. Yeah, the 7th, I'm pretty sure. Um, March 7th class next week is Lisa Gibbon. She's going to be showing her two brand new collections, which I believe are called um, Wishful Thinking and... I don't remember the other one. And I should, because I love them. One second, you guys. Uh, wishful Thinking and Wishes and Dreams. That's it. Wishes and Dreams and Wishful Thinking. And Steph Dinell, you are the winner tonight. So you make sure to uh, message Carrie at Carrie at PrimaMarketingInc.com to go ahead and claim your prize from tonight. But I wanted to let you guys know, don't forget to tune in next week, March 7th, for Lisa Gibbons' class. Hi, Lisa. If you happen to be watching this, I totally love you. Just to, just to let you know case you weren't sure. And also the pocketbook pad. She's going to be featuring that. And also, you guys, don't forget to sign up for the uh, Live with Prima newsletter. There's going to be a news new newsletter on Friday for March, or tomorrow. So head over to... Where do they head, Carrie? Can you link it? I'm not sure where they subscribe to the newsletter. I think it's in the Live with Prima site, livewithprima.com. And lastly, um, don't forget to check out the website as well. There's been a couple of updates, which are really cool. They have a, like, their website's completely redone. So you may want to go ahead and check it out, you guys. And I just want to let you know that. And I think that's all. That was tonight's class. I hope you enjoyed. Any questions, you guys? Maybe I'll have a giveaway on my blog. Should I do that for one of these albums? I think I will, because I'm going to post the video, um, the, the recorded video, and the thingy on my blog. So I think I'll have a giveaway as well. Well, keep your eyes peeled. Head over to scrappyhappiness.com. Um, that's my blog. I will be posting this video right after this class is finished. So... It'll be over there, and I'll be giving away one of the albums that I did tonight, because I don't need two. I need one. So I'll be giving away this one, because I already started working in my other one. So the, the one that we created tonight, I will be giving away to one lucky winner over there. So thanks so much, guys, and I think that's all. Don't forget to, ch again, don't forget to check out next Thursday's classes, and the new classes are going to be announced tomorrow for March. So I hope you all have a great night, and I will catch you all next time. Thanks so much for coming, you guys. Have a great day, and bye, everyone.